Okay, we're back at 11 o'clock on a given Friday with Trump Week. And by the way, I want to make one thing totally clear. It's spelled W-E-E-K. One of these days, maybe we can play on, on, the, on the choice of words there. It could be W-E-A-K. I'm looking forward <laughs> to that time. But that's another show. Tim Mappicella, Cynthia okay. Sinclair, here we are. Hey, Jake. Good morning. Trump Week. So, okay, the first thing is the impeachment reality show. Where are we, Tim? Well, how do we get to the impeachment reality show? And I think it got a big push forward with uh, Robert Mueller's nine-minute speech. But where we're at is the Democrats are stuck in the middle, hence the title of this show. They're stuck in the middle, and they don't know which way to go. Um, on one hand, if they move forward with the impeachment, the President of the United States is going to bash them and say, see, all they have in their, in their basket is nothing but to take me out and, and try to drag me in the mud and try to ruin, ruin my stellar reputation. <laughs> and stop me from doing the wonderful things the, the work I of the doing. people. Right. Yeah. The work of the people. Yeah. If they go the other way, what Trump will say is, see, they could have impeached me, but they didn't impeach me because there was nothing wrong. I was totally exonerated. I didn't have any collusion or conspiracy with Russia in the election, and I certainly didn't obstruct justice. They could have impeached me if they wanted to. I'm a good boy. So, so that is literally, by definition, stuck in the middle. Yeah, you bet. Here we are, stuck in the middle. Nothing's happening. So, you know, this is like a, a fabulous uh, business deal, chess game kind of thing, reality show, if you will. Uh, what do we do? What, what are people doing? What are the Democrats doing? What are the Republicans doing? What are the, what are the third column? What are they doing? Well, I know that Justin Amash came out. And I'm really proud of him. And he had a really wonderful town hall meeting. He went back home in his home state, right? And he got a standing ovation twice, first when he walked in the door, and then again when he started talking about the reality of he read the report. And anyone, this is one of the things he said that really struck with me, anyone who reads that report cannot help but see the, um, the obstruction and the criminal um, elements that are involved. And then the thing that really got me, though, is when Mueller came out and said in his, during his nine-minute speech, said that, listen, we had serious, serious, um, what did he call it, sweeping, uh, complete, uh, from the Russians, and I can't remember his exact words, what he says, I bet you've got it written down, though, a systematic, sweeping, systematic uh, what you call it from the Russians. And every American should be concerned. Every American. And he also said every American needs to read the report. And boy, out there, read the report because you <clears throat> will be convinced. Well, let's take a look at all of what he said in his nine minutes. Nine minutes, you know? I mean, somebody, yeah. somebody stopped me in the street yesterday and said, you know, it's 448 pages. Have you read it, JK? And I was really stuck. And I think if you stop everyone on the street, they would have the same answer. Including Congress. Right. Well, Including they Congress. have a duty. But then we all, according yes. to Mueller, we all have a duty to do something. Yeah. Well, so we <clears throat> the question is, uh, you know, did Mueller, you heard it here on Think Tech, did Mueller do a good job here? Mueller did a good job if it was 1962. <laughs> right. I'll go along with that. The yeah. rules of the game have changed. And right. that, what are the rules of the game? There are no rules. Right. Okay. You know, I, I respect Robert Mueller and, you know, his dedication as a, an ex-Marine and, you know, service career uh, individual. And what, what is their model? You don't wear the badge of politics at all when, you, when you're in the armed services. You, you just don't. don't. Bite the, you don't bite the chain of command. And you don't bite the chain of command. He lives his life. And it, I think it's played out here during the two years of the, of the investigation and certainly in the uh, portrayal of the report. So can I fault him for that? No. Because in his heart, that's what he's trying to do. Okay. Now, um, you know, he says some things that I think go beyond him trying to be completely neutral on it. And let me just read one quote. That the Constitution requires a process other than criminal justice system to formally accuse a sitting, sitting president of wrongdoing. So he's, he's given these, you know, these tidbits, these, these little trail notes for Congress to follow. And he's saying... Look at the report. Look at the Constitution. It's all there in front of you. In fact, 
He said, the report is my testimony. There it is. I remember lawyers who used to, you know, in, in my practice experience, go to court. <clears throat> they write it out. They write it out in their brief. Um, and when it came time for argument, oral argument with the judge, they would make the strange assumption that the judge read the brief, <laughs> <clears throat> that he understood it, right. and he was on the same page. And then they would lose. They would lose because they miscalculated what the judge was looking at and thinking about and realizing. And, you know, you have to, you have to calculate your audience. So you want to, you know, hit a 448-page deal, <clears throat> and you want to get very cute about how you frame everything so cautiously. Wouldn't it have been better for him to say in English expressly, <clears throat> I don't feel that I can charge, you know, obstruction here. But I have had a number of, I have found in my investigation, a number of elements that would permit Congress, or if he wasn't a sitting president, a court to convict him uh, of, of obstruction of justice. I am not going to do anything because I feel, you know, restrained to do that. But you guys can and you should pursue this in English. He could have said that in his remarks on Thursday, too. Well, he said well, he it. He didn't say he, that. He, he disguised it. Yeah. Okay, so what did he say? He said, had we had the confidence that the president clearly did not commit a crime, we would have said so. So he's kind of... Why couldn't he say... We, we feel, think we the president committed commit a, crime a crime and you should do something about it. <laughs> it's the flip side of that. Why is he being so cute? Well, most of the country. Yes, I, I agree. He's not clear. He's the not base being is direct. not going to accept right. anything he says, yeah. and then all the other people are confused about what does he really mean. Will the guy please speak his mind already? You know, he's had know, all that money, and he's had all this time, and we all we all sat around waiting. He was going to be our savior, girls. I got to tell you, he has not been our savior, and uh, will he be our savior going forward? What did I say about calling those girls <laughs> off camera? <laughs> <laughs> um, will he be our savior? Well, he, he, you're going to get what you get. This is it. You, you could take him behind closed doors and have him you know, do further testimony. He's not going to give any more than he already has in that nine minutes. Right. I guarantee it. He's done. He's done. He's done. But, you know, I, I don't think he's done the job the American people had hoped for, or at least the people I know had hoped for. So let's shift for a minute to Nancy. Nancy, who was in and out of that job already, Nancy, who we, we all have such hope for. We, we hope, we have aspirational hope that Nancy can carry this. And every time she does anything, you know, aggressive, uh, anything meeting, meeting Trump at the pass, uh, responding to him sharply, we say, wow, go for it, Nancy, go for it, Nancy. Um, but the fact is that she's kind of milk toast anyway, in my opinion. Uh, and she really hasn't, like Mueller, hasn't realized what I would have hoped for her. You know, there is no countervailing voice here. You know, Trump controls the agenda. He, he lies, and people, a lot of people believe it. Um, he is making his point with, without any, any pushback on so many things. And she pushes back on, on the, what do you call it, the uh, reality show kinds of things, you know. But she's not really pushing back. There is no voice that argues well, with him consistently, regularly, and aggressively. Well, I think that Nancy's um, whole approach here has some merit to it. If they were to rush through, get this impeachment going, get it on board, get it in the House, then it goes to the Senate and the Senate goes, bing, kicks it out. And then Trump gets to say, well, look, they brought an impeachment and I was exonerated. Then he can really claim it because the Senate will have done that for her wasn't, and for him. I mean, he wasn't exonerated, though. Right. Well, he no, just what didn't I mean, get the I, votes mean for it. <laughs> I mean, after the fact. Yeah, yeah but that's what he'll say. Right. right. And so I can understand that she wants to continue all of these investigations that she's got going. Yeah. You know, the I'm judiciary, really the intelligence, well, the investigation, well, and, and that's the oversight. Point. And so that's that's a, we, we, that was the exact point. 17 People are sick or 20 or 25 yeah. investigations going on. <laughs> What have we heard about well, the Well, we had two court decisions this week. those investigations. Has a single thing popped out that, have inter that has interested no. us? Yes, two, well, not interested us, but it should have. But there was two court um, decisions not, that happened. But wait, they Congress. were from the investigations in Congress, and they ruled in favor of 
Congress and the Financial Committee, it was Maxine Waters got mm -hmm. what she wanted to be able to get some of his tax returns and to get his financials. Okay. So that was one small, you know, well, victory let me ask you, anyway. Wouldn't it be better if, if you say to yourself, morally, you know, Mr. Smith goes to Washington, right? Uh, Jimmy Stewart, all that. Um, look, a violation of law has taken place here. And um, because of that, uh, I, I vote with my conscience. I think that democracy is being rendered, torn asunder here. Yes. Uh, I think the balance of power has been shattered. The First Amendment has been shattered. Uh, I, I am going to vote. I'm going to move for impeachment, even if they don't. And I'm going to vote for anybody who makes a motion for See, impeachment. And and I'm agree. doing that because I think it's the right Thing. Gee, it took a Republican to say that, Justin right. Amash. Isn't that Amash true? It took a Republican to say really that. Said it. Not know. a Democrat, but a Republican. Uh, <laughs> you, get, you get my one, one, and and that's been twenty four hours at least, maybe two days already. Yeah. Still, just one, one. Okay, so I, remember, well, the, the, remember, there's oh, an old okay. political strategy, and it's not going to work here. I know they've done it in the past. Is they tried it with Benghazi? Okay, they tried to just drib and drab it. Prolong it, protract it, and you know, as long as you can, so all this stuff, this bad information comes out, and it, you know, just death through a thousand cuts. You know, then the president candidate is rendered useless by the time election comes. I hope the Democrats are not trying to take this and investigate, investigate, wait for more witnesses, wait for more witnesses for the next 12 months, and hope they can, you know, knock Donald Trump off with a thousand cuts. It's not going to work. Oh, no, you're right. The American public is tired of it. So if you're going to impeach, now's the time. Now is the time. Now's the time, and you better right. get it over before fall. All in favor right. of impeachment, raise your hands. <laughs> okay, I'm in. Well, you know, are you in now? I'm in. I told you I was in last oh, week. that's right. <laughs> I did. But I did. you know, um, every single <laughs> Democratic candidate has come out about that impeachment needs to happen, that we need to go forward with impeachment. Every single one of them has now. Oh, wait, there's four. I take it back. Tulsi Gabbard, uh, and I can't remember the other three. There's a couple of them that have not come out yet. But other, every other candidate has come out about it. We see, need see, to go forward about, with impeachment. I worry about is that we play this game with the soap opera, you know, yeah. the reality show. Um, and we'll move on. And meanwhile, Russia will be interfering with the investigation, doing the right. same thing. And he'll be doing machinations upon machinations yep. because... He gets bolder all the time. He Every gets day. away with like any psychopath. He gets bolder all the time, Every and he'll day. continue to do it, but worse. Yeah. Because he, now Every he knows day. he can And the damage is being done to our democracy and our institutions of democracy now. Right. right. So if you, exactly. okay. Every We're not going to get the votes in the Senate. So, you, so what? Give it up. Exactly. Okay. That's my, what my I My point think. about is, yes, it'll fail, but you want to you wanna put it out there. Exactly. You want to stand for something. Emperor, it's At not, least you know you not wearing any clothes. Right. And with that thought, you know, I think we're going to take a minute. We're going to take a minute. Good. Let's cool off for a minute. Yeah. We'll come back. There's lots more to talk about right. here on Trump Week, okay. W-E-E-K. We'll be right back. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go beyond the lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. <laughs> Hey, aloha. My name is Andrew Lanning. I'm the host of Security Matters Hawaii, airing every Wednesday here on Think Tech Hawaii, live from the studios. I'll bring you guests. I'll bring you information about the things in security that matter to keeping you safe, your coworkers safe, your family safe, to keep our community safe. Uh, we want to teach you about those things in our industry that, you know, may be a little outside of your experience. So please join me because security matters. Aloha. Before the break, we were talking about, uh, you know, uh, Trump and the Russians and the fact that the Russian, we haven't done anything to stop the Russians. This is important for this part of our discussion. This part of our discussion is uh, foreign policy. I call it foreign policy failures. Because no action has been taken by Trump. All the deflection about the investigation and all this, but no action has been taken by Trump or Congress 
to preserve the voting system and voting security in the country. Well, wait, because Congress has actually written and passed, bipartisan passed two bills in the House that Mitch McConnell refuses to look at. And it's all about election security. Incredible. And he won't do anything. It's Incredible. just dead Incredible. in the Senate. Minimum, I think. Is four it four yeah. now? Okay. Yeah. I, I only know two, but yeah. Incredible. Okay, but you wanted to make a point about, about um, you know, the whole Russian affair and Trump's view of the question, as he has expressed it recently, uh, of whether Russia did in fact interfere in our elections in 2016. Right. And know this, that he didn't just blurt it out, you know, in front of a camera. He actually took the time. And it was 1.57 a.m., but nevertheless, he took the time to tweet out the following. He said, Russia, Russia, Russia. <laughs> That's all you heard of at the beginning of this witch hunt hoax. And now Russia has disappeared because I had nothing to do with Russia helping me get elected. It was a crime that didn't exist. So now the Dems and their partner, fake news media, dot, dot, dot. Okay. <laughs> So he, he inadvertently said, okay, yeah, they helped me. He said it twice. Uh -huh. He sent that tweet, corrected something else in the tweet, and then he sent the same tweet twice, where the language indicates that, yes, Russia did interfere in the election. He just didn't have but anything to do with it. What troubles me is that with all of that, I mean, this goes to the foundation of our democracy, voting. Right. This, is, this is a republic. This is a democracy. You haven't done jack. Right. And he hasn't done Jack. We're not even talking about it. That's and I say this every week. I think because it's my biggest fear is that our election security is number one. Who cares who's running? Who cares what good candidate can go against Trump? If he cheats, it doesn't That's matter how good they are. Going to happen again. Which is what he's doing. So don't and then, don't be sure that any of those Democratic candidates are going to legitimately win, yeah, win because yeah. the whole election is. If you remember. We would, have never, we would have never have known that they actually were successful in getting in some of the election machines is if it wasn't for, and I can't remember her name, but she's in jail now for five years for leaking a document that... It was did, a Russian you, agent. No, it was, uh, she was in the military, in the Air Force, and I'm Wait, sorry, I, I can't remember her mean. name, but she's in serving five years for leaking the document to say, we know that they came in and, and hit our machines. They were successful, and that would have never been known. It would have been, you know, subject to speculation Except for the or fact hearsay, that she went to jail. but she went to, you know, she, <laughs> whistle to she whistle blowing on the military. And, you know, it was, it was a, I think it was an it NSA hurt. document. So, you know, so hey. let's talk about the other aspects of this vacuum on foreign policy. I, oh. I just uh, tick down, you know, uh, where are we in China? Um, they're, they're threatening now. Um, to withhold natural resources from us that we used to make batteries, and right. those, those are critical well, resources. Yeah. And uh, well, I don't know what we're going to do about that. They have ways to hurt us that they have well, not Well, we've let that go because of our environmental concerns. So we're at 1.4 billion metric tons of this material for computers and batteries and, you know, all sorts of, you know, critical things. I think China's sitting on 24, 25 metric, billion metric tons of this raw material and where they got it from Africa or, you know, no. From us, we send, that's yeah. where we send all our recycled stuff. We send it back to China. Yeah. Well, they dig it out of the earth, Yeah, too. they dig it. Yeah, they, they, they're mining they dig it. I know they're mining it, but, uh, but that's what we do with it. We yeah. send all our recycled stuff back there. So they may very well leverage that against us, and that would put us to, a little bit in a world of hurt. To say nothing about hacking, where you, you don't admit that you hacked it, but you brought a grid down. Yeah. I, I think that's coming. That's coming because he's aggravating everybody. Uh, Mexico. Just a moment on Mexico. Oh, my gosh. With the tariffs. That he, he just the, made the a five, deal with them, and now he's going to go back up again. But didn't he make a deal just a few just, days ago? Yeah, it was like Mexico a minute ago. Canada? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it didn't get, uh, it didn't get passed by Congress because it, it's at the level of a treaty. Right. Um, but now he's, he's, he's reneging on that deal. Right. Uh, by imposing these punitive tariffs on them because right. he's claiming it's their fault. All these people trying to get in the border, it's their fault. It's Mexico's right. fault. Mexico's he's, fault. Yeah, he's trying to impose an obligation on them to stop the, you know, the caravans or what have you. Well, you know, uh, I, find, he, I find that this is like when he wanted them to pay for the wall. Right. It's ridiculous. Um, well, but, they have a, a actually... But he's violating a, his own agreement. His own agreement, he, yes. Know, that he and, wanted negotiated. How can, if you are a foreign country, how in the world can you trust you a cannot. man who violates his agreement before the ink is dry? Yeah, no, you cannot. Well, and remember, this proposed tariff is right now sitting at 
It could go up to 25%. Yeah. Who knows what it will If he's be. not getting what he wants as fast as he wants, the then you'll see subjective. 10. You see the stock market right now down 369 points on the Dow right. Jones because of this new little nuance about the 5% against Mexico. And they know very right. well, if you're on Wall Street or an investor, that 5% 5, 5 tariff is just the beginning of it. And right. knowing Donald Trump, it probably will go to 25. Yeah, the stock market's been going down regularly for the past two weeks. And and what is, uh, what is interesting about it, I mean, I'm no expert, but what is interesting about it is that the 25,000 level okay, is a kind of benchmark level where investors say, well, I'll, I'll hold tight, but if we cross 25,000 on Dow, you know, get below that, then I got to bail. I can't. And dump on everything. This is you a start meaningful dump on everything, yeah. benchmark for me. And I think that's going to happen. Well, I think the it market is too. priced in the China tariffs, even at the worst, 25%. They, over time, it's been priced in. It's in the, it's in the, it's in the recipe. But um, this Mexico thing was a, a nuance that they hadn't thought of or right. even, even could suspect would happen. Right. Yeah. Anyway, so that's just another part. Um, and then, of course, uh, what have we heard about Venezuela? Nothing, even Wasn't though Wasn't he supposed to help those people? He didn't help them at all. He took away they, some of their aid. They left the country. He took away some of their aid. Uh, they're starving. Um, that, that guy is, uh, is in charge of everything now. The dictator Maduro, is, yeah. is winning. Maduro is winning the game. And we haven't heard much, have we? And Trump no. has not even made a moral statement about it. Um, it's an abandoned issue. Is what it is. Well, it's he just, can't remember from day to day what his initiatives are. And the thing that's important to remember is that Russia has a base down there, but, and, and China Russia too. has a big hand in what's happening and why Maduro is still in power is because of Russia's involvement down there. So we need to remember that, and it's a base that's big enough and has a big enough runway to hold nuclear carrying aircraft, which is yeah. they have nuclear. We talked that about this. A, to us. We talked about this a couple months oh, ago. Yeah, it could be did. the new Cuba crisis. Yep. Absolutely. Um, you know, there's it is already. I suggest. I agree. Well, and I, it, the, the curiosity is why haven't we heard anything from it? Right. Is, you know, is it one of those things just swirling out there by itself that he may need a new distraction? But he's just right now he doesn't need that particular distraction. Just collect your distractions. Collect your distractions. <laughs> Care for when you need an emergency. You know? like emergency I have the distraction. Cards, right? oh, let's see, I'll Speaking play this distraction today. So, so now we have an emergency with Iran. Oh, boy, uh, and leave. that somehow justifies violating Congress's expressed will not to sell weapons to Saudi Arabia. Which he did um, anyway. He's selling weapons to Saudi Arabia and they're using them in Yemen. Oh my God. Even in, though we wrote a bill violation. that said no. Even through the Senate, it said no. Yeah. So who is controlling this? There is no counterbalance. Well, when you sell something forbidden by Congress, isn't that just one more good reason for an impeachment process immediately? You bet, you bet. another phony emergency. That's yeah, what he's doing. Yeah. There'll be more emergencies. Why? Because he got away with two of them already, and nobody stopped him. Right. Nobody stopped him on the border, not really, about that phony right. emergency. And nobody's stopping him on the sale of weapons to Saudi Arabia. Another phone. Well, emergency. and don't forget the you know the the money he didn't get for his wall that became that emergency. Right. You yeah. know. Let's not forget about Jared Kushner too, who's in Israel, and it's not going well. Well, let's see. His yeah, peace let's talk plan about is that. not going well, and Netanyahu is even going to. They have to do another vote, so Netanyahu may not even well, continue you on see his how power. Paper thin. Trump's support of Netanyahu was. He's not popular, right. really. Right. And, and Jews in America really don't like him at all. Right. And he's, he's not looking for peace. He's looking for this kind of exaggerated security thing, right. um, which doesn't, doesn't lead to peace. Um, so what, what you have is um, that, that deal, when Trump helped him uh, win, you know, and all these gestures and moves help him win, that, they didn't buy that. Mm -hmm. And the government under Netanyahu fell apart in 60 days. Yeah. And now, you know, it's a, it's a first time that ever happened in Israel. I don't think Israel's in good condition in terms of its government right now. Yeah, um, it's not. So, and I don't think Netanyahu's coming back anytime soon. So mm -hmm. it's a failed, what I'm saying, it's a failed foreign policy. Um, Which, of course, he'll take no responsibility for. Right. He won't even talk about it. Um, okay, North Korea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, when he insulted Joe Biden? I, I, I agree with Kim Jong-un because he really is a low IQ guy, you know, well, yeah. giving his record. And the worst part about what he said was that I don't care about these, um, these missiles. 
they don't bother me at all. Whereas he's in Japan, and Japan seriously has a problem with these missiles. And yet he just totally dis I mean, he's in the palace when he's saying these things, and it's like he doesn't You know, care. there's something, whether it's one-on-one -on -one or one-on-500, you're in, on the podium, is know your audience. Yeah. Know your audience. <laughs> and apparently he'd never learned that in, in Speech 101. He just never <laughs> did. He hasn't gotten to first base on Kim Jong-un. No. And, the, and the last thing that I saw about Kim Jong-un is Kim Jong-un was all ticked off that that meeting didn't go anywhere. And all thus right. he was uh, assassinating a bunch of people uh, who were in, involved tangentially in that meeting. Right. Um, so w what kind of success well, is that not. exactly? Are we making any progress in dealing with this man? Uh, answer, no, not at all. No. So, you know, if Trump were here today and say, oh, I did a great job in North Korea. We're best buddies. Not. Uh, well, you know, exactly. we, we heard for at least a day, because that's what the news cycle is these days, one day. Um, there was quite a bit of consternation about the President of the United States palling up, saddling up with Kim, Kim Jong-un about bashing Joe Biden. I mean, you know, and Trump said, well, I was sticking up for sleepy Joe Biden. You know, instead of yeah. saying that, <laughs> his, um, that he was a low IQ um, idiot, I said he was a low IQ individual. So I'm sticking up for him. This is childish. Oh, right. This is childish. This is what three-year-old, five-year-old say. You think, his, you think say. his base uh, sees yeah. it as childish? Uh, no. You know that but, one lady in that. But um, when's the adult outside. in the room going to say this is this is childish? Enough's yeah. enough. I don't know. The other thing we since Sorry, we're talking about no, 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 I was talking about name. Asia. Um, the thing about covering the name of, of the uh, USS uh, Oh my gosh. Cain, uh, that was like the worst of the worst. That, that the came worst. from the White House. Yes. I don't think that was without Trump's knowledge. No way. No I don't way. care what he says. No. And then at the very end of his whole denial that it wasn't me, I didn't know anything about it. But, you know, somebody else must have done it. And, you know, their heart was in the right place. They had good intentions. Was that what it was? They, they were they, well-meaning. Well-meaning, that's what it was. Yeah, but they were well-meaning. In other words, he knew that they were doing it for him, for him. and he was okay with it. Yeah, he didn't have a problem with the it old at all. Man. But I'll tell you, if I'd been on a ship, make me an enlisted man, an E-1 enlisted man, and somebody told me to put a tarp over the name of the put ship, put me in the brig. I would say, put me in the brig. Yeah, yeah me too. Not only, not only that, that didn't but happen. they wanted to I go know, to a speech, scary. and because they had their ins insignias with, you know, the John, U USS John McCain, they were forbidden to attend. Yeah, they couldn't wear the stuff that I mean, had anything I, about McCain. What do you know? <laughs> well, he went on and on about how tell, he doesn't buddy. like them. I, He's never been a fan. I, he doesn't like things, the guy. It seems to me are pervasive to suggest that, that he's a really bad dude. He's a yes. bad guy, and everybody around him is a selected bad guy. Yeah. And they're running bad government, and yet we're locked out of fixing that. That's why we need Nancy to step up. Yes, we do. That's why it's, it's, it's not enough to have these uh, endless, uh, I'm going to have an investigation proceedings when we don't actually do anything. Well, they drag out the ability to actually I'm get sad about the subpoenas, one more thing, right? you guys. Hmm. I'm sad that we didn't have time to go into his domestic policies today. <laughs> As usual, not enough time. Next week, we yeah, got plenty week, to talk about, finished. too, huh? Uh, let's try to focus next time on his, <laughs> the invisibility I call it the AWOL policies, where yeah, he doesn't yeah. have a policy, but he does destroy the country. Right. And we should tick them off because people get yeah. lost in the, in the reality show. They don't right. realize nothing happening on infrastructure or health care or the social safety net, except bad stuff. The bad so stuff, next week, yeah. Next week. Next week. Tim Apicella, week. Cynthia Sinclair. Look forward to it. Thanks, I love Jay. you guys. Thank next you, Jay. We love you, too. Aloha, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Trump Trump Aloha.